I just sent a WhatsApp, end-to-end -end encryption is used when the chat, I just sent that message to my friend. Encryption, is that something that we need to be aware or is something just a fancy word that people use in order to confuse you? This is the Hacker's Corner. Hi everybody, welcome back. I want to thank everybody who has been responsive to these shows. My name is Christian Servin. I'm an associate professor in computer science here at El Paso Community College, and this is the Hacker's Corner. I want to thank again for your great response in the social media, in the actual YouTube channel the EPCC is hosting. The whole idea of this show is to bring you this technology, these ideas of the entire technology that we're living in right now in, in these years. Um, but at the same time, we want to bring to the community this perspective of computing. It's not because of the idea of to scare you or to actually to be um, aware about all these interesting situations that's happened, but to be aware about the consequences, the ethical consequences of using a device, a mobile device, like your cell phone, like this one that I was just talking about in the introduction of this show, and also your computer, the servers, your laptop, your mobile device that you use every single day in the classroom, at home, with your friends. As you might know, um, we've been working in a series of cybersecurity, and the whole idea here is to bring you this awareness to the community about what we're doing in the classroom, but also what is happening in the world about the whole situation in the cyber world that is happening. Particularly today, we're going to talk about encryption, description, but in general, cryptography. And many people have heard the concept of cryptography here and there. And in reality, what we're doing here is to aware, or actually to give you this level of awareness every time you use one of these mobile devices, like your cell phone. So you may use devices like your cell phone or your tablet or any device that you use, and you send all these messages to your friends through these apps that you can see right here. You can use WhatsApp, we can use Telegram, you can use, um, I don't know, Snapchat, whatever you think you're comfortable to using. But in reality, what happens when you go and use these devices in a public domain? Like, for example, you go to a coffee shop and then you get um, perfect, perfect scenario, right? You go to a coffee shop, coffee and free Wi-Fi. This free Wi-Fi can be a little bit dangerous, and this is what we want to warn you about when you go to these coffee shops, is because sometimes you go there, sit down, go to your mobile device or your computer, and start checking your bank account, you send emails with probably sensitive information, and we need to, need, we need to tell you what's going on behind the scenes. Let's talk about cryptography today, because cryptography is something that is being used for many, many years. As a matter of fact, this is nothing new in related to this tactic about cryptography. So what is cryptography? Cryptography is this process when you have two individuals that you would like to communicate with each other. As you can see right now in the screen, we have two individuals who would like to go and, and discuss some piece of information. I don't know, some kind of piece of information like uh, a, a message or something, or maybe it can be sensitive information like your, your password or an account or a number, I don't know. So suppose that there's person A wants to communicate to person B. Ideally, and this is what we've been talking in other shows, in other episodes of this, of this show, is that individual A wants to send that message to individual B. Ideally, in a perfect world, individual B receives that message. It's like, okay, fine, I got this account, I got this telephone number, I got everything. But in reality, we live in the world right now when we need to be very careful when you send information through the web, information through your mobile device. Because this time, instead of just sending directly to your friend, someone in the middle, someone will interject that piece of information. This is an adversarial. And this adversarial can be any, any person that you might think. It can be probably a person who is in the coffee shop just waiting for you to send that information through your bank account or through your telephone number, or is someone who is outside of the network who would like to try to ex extract that information, manipulate that information, maybe keep that information, maybe change the integrity of that information, and then send it to a third party, for example. So this part is super sensitive. And that is why we arrived to this conclusion that we need 
encryption. We cannot send information through the web or through any device without proper encryption. And this part is a little bit more lengthy than we're supposed to express in this one show. There's many, many work done in the past. There's a lot of courses. There's a lot of theory behind the scenes. There's a lot of practices behind the scenes that help us to understand these concepts of encryption. I like this definition that is being proposed by uh, Ronald Rivest, who is one of the ACM Turing Awards recipients. Cryptography is the practice and study of techniques for secure communication in the presence of adversarial behavior. And the key words here are secure communication in the presence of adversarial behavior. An adversarial is someone who has an interest on you, an interest on the communication you're sending. Maybe it's not only data, but when you collect that data, you will receive and you connect those dots from the data, you will transform your data into an information. And that is the most sensitive part that we're living in right now. This is not new. I mean, there's been a lot of work done for many, many years. It happens to be that we're living in an era where everybody, as I mentioned previously, has one of these devices. And when you send one of those messages, it arrives real quick. It happens to be that those algorithms that manipulate that data, you can receive that information. It can be in the network, it can be in the cloud, or it can be somewhere else stored just waiting for you to send that message. And if it's not encrypted, your information, then those are bad news. So for example, as you can see here in the screen, there's a lot of cases, there's millions of cases up to now, since 2017, this data comes directly from 2017 and now, there's been millions of cases where information has been breached, information has been stolen just because there's no encryption. This is very, very scary. Most of, your, uh, most of your devices nowadays have some encryption protocols. What does that mean, Professor, encryption protocols? It means that every time you write an email, every time you send an SMS, or every time you send a WhatsApp, for example, that information gets encrypted based on an algorithm. Let me just remind you what an algorithm is. An algorithm is a sequence of steps, finite steps, in order to solve a problem. But now the word for algorithms are being widely used because these algorithms are everywhere. The reason why I'm telling you this is because right now with artificial intelligence, machine learning, intelligent computing and data sciences, there's a lot of those intelligent systems just waiting for you to do things and learn from you. That's how these machines, they call intelligent machines because they're learning from our behavior. And that is a very interesting situation. Now, we're going to have an episode only focus on that social media, only focus in that kind of machine learning. Let's come back to cryptography because that is what we're talking today. In cryptography, there's various versions of encryption. Mostly are the ones that you're seeing right now. Symmetric, asymmetric, and hashing. Today we're going to talk about symmetric in particular because that is the most Easy, uh, I guess it's not, I shouldn't be using the word easy, but it's the most understandable way to do it systematically. Also, the, probably the most easy to break. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, because uh, when we talk about encryption, we, are, we want to guarantee that we preserve the security of that encryption algorithm. So here is an example of symmetric key algorithms, we're called advanced encryption standard. That was used for many, many years in, in many systems, in many computers, that basic protect. But again, later on, asymmetric algorithms, it turns out to be more robust, more actually more complex, but at the same time more secure. When we deal with computing, computing in general, we measure complexity as the level of robustness, how secure can be without making actually programs to work more than it should be or in, in terms of complexity in analysis here, how long it takes a machine to generate possible solutions. So those are, uh, those are terminology that we use in computer in order to understand these concepts. One of the most popular ones, as a matter of fact, the most popular one from asymmetric algorithms is called RSA. 
and it stands for the letters of the authors, Rives, Shamir, and Alderman. And we already talked about Rives in the definition of cryptography. So they received the Turing Award. And if you don't know what the Turing Award is, it's like the Oscars for computer science. We don't have, in computer science, we do not have Nobel Prize in computer science, but we have a Turing Award, which is basically one of the, the, the most respectful and honorable award that you can receive in the area of computing. So they received this award um, for the work that they did for cryptography. Right now, every device, like every, at least for the government, they encrypt information using RSA. And we'll talk about that thing towards the transition of this um, episode. Now, let me just tell you about hashing. Hashing is probably one of the most popular right now algorithms in order to encrypt things. Hashing is very different from cryptography in terms that you don't need an actual algorithm to solve it. Hashing, it's what we call block box. You receive an information, an input, and then it will generate always the same size of the hash. You have heard hashing in terms of hash code or hashtag. And I'll talk about that in, in a little bit. They're similar, they're similar actions. Um, what's that, hashing? Yes, hashtag EPCC, hashtag Hackers Corner. That is the way you receive, go directly to these links, and that will save you a lot of time in order to do it. It's the same principle. As a matter of fact, it's the same way you can validate um, integrity on things. Now, before we jump directly into cryptography, we receive an email, uh, well, a couple of emails, and saying about cryptocurrency. Let me show, and that's a beautiful question because cryptocurrency is a little bit different from cryptography. Cryptocurrency is a very different thing when we talk about mining, about how the currency like Bitcoin is being used based on cryptocurrency. We will talk about that thing later on, but it's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about the art of hiding information. Let's see this definition. We will start with Caesar Cipher. Caesar Cipher is probably one of the most well-known algorithms for symmetric key algorithms. As a matter of fact, it's called a substitution algorithm, which means that it can help you to just only substitute some values in order to encrypt. This part is based on the name of Julius Caesar. All of us, we know who Julius Caesar was. Now, he used this algorithm in order to send information from one, from one army to another army. That was the way he handles all his private correspondence. So uh, if you go, if you're a historian, you can go see how he basically sent those messages. Julius Caesar, he conquered the Roman Imperium back in the day, and of course he had enemies, normal. And he realized how important communication was point A to point B. When he sends his messages, you say, you know what, there's gonna be other armies who are gonna try to intercept my messages, and then um, I guess, uh, try to prevent my plans. So he was very smart. He said, you know what, I'm gonna start to do this scrambles in my messages and the other generals in the different locations, they know the key. So a key is a key point here. <laughs> key is a key point because once you know the key, you can unarm or basically decrypt the message that is being sent. So we're gonna talk about private and public keys later on when we talk about an asymmetric. But here, this substitution technique consists of two alphabets, like the alphabet that we have in English or Spanish or in Russian, whatever you want to talk to it, but also you have the shifting alphabet. And this is interesting because that helps you to do just only substitution. Again, this is only for educational purposes, and I'm going to show you how to basically extract or encrypt a message but using the Caesar cipher. Now, is not effective, I, gotta, I must confess, because there's only 26 letters in English. And if you make all these combinations, you can decrypt it, you can break it, just to do it in this brute force. If you forgot what brute force is, I'm gonna invite you to watch the other episode that we talked about brute force previously, and that will give you an idea how can we break this particular password or this particular message. Now, something that we teach at EPCC is um, in the computer science program, uh, department, the computer science program here at DPCC, um, we, we teach you computer programming, but also we teach you a little bit of cyber, particularly in algorithms. So there is an extension of this algorithm it's called the Visionaire Cipher, which is a little bit more complex and more difficult to break. 
I'm gonna invite you, if you're interested, if you like this show, I'm gonna invite you to go in and see what we're doing in the classrooms. So what does that consist? Let's talk about the Caesar cipher. So we have 26 letters, A to C. You all remember the Sesame Street, all right? Um, you remember those letters from that show. So right now what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a second alphabet and we're gonna have this shifting. I'm gonna pick five only for the demonstration purposes. Usually we pick a decent value of, uh, of shifting, but again, there's only 26 letters, so we cannot be very creative here, but only for demonstration purposes, we're gonna use the number five. This is how it consists. We're gonna shift the second alphabet that you can see there, one step at a time. So we're gonna have a counter here called the shifting value. So when we click one, this is shift one, Basically, we move to the left the alphabet. Now you can see that B is in the place of A, C is in the place of B, D is in the place of C, and so on. Now A went all the way to Z. So that's the shift one. Shift two will move the B. Shift three will move the C to the end. Shift four will move the D. And finally, shift five will move the E at the end. Notice that it gets aligned somehow, because now we have the original alphabet that you want to describe any message to your friend, to your family, to your boss, but also you have the kind of shifting and transition one that we're gonna use for the Caesar cipher. So now that we have this, we have this mapping. Suppose that we want to map or we want to encrypt the word hacker. How do we do this? Well, H belongs to this particular letter, which is M. So now we have H from hacker will correspond to M using Caesar cipher. How about A? A corresponds to F. So now we have F into, instead of A. How about C? That will be an H. The next one will be K, which corresponds to the letter P in Caesar cipher following by E, which corresponds to J. Next is R, which is W. Now, what do we have here? We have the word hacker, and what we did is that we map the word hacker, every character from this word, to the corresponding Caesar cipher alphabet. That is based on shifting five. So we did sh five shifts, so we move five letters correspondingly to that alphabet, and then we do the mapping. So this is called a substitution. So the substitution only substitutes one letter to the corresponding one. Now, when you send that message, you're not going to send the word hacker. You're gonna send M, F, H, P, J, and W. And the other person who will receive that message, you will say, okay, this is encrypted. Let me do the mapping. And in the other side, they're gonna extract that information using Caesar cipher. How about if I give you a demonstration? How do we do this in the classroom? Again, the reason why we're doing this is to give you this educational purposes. So whatever we show you in this show is for you to understand behind the scenes how these things work. Nothing of this is harmful. As a matter of fact, this algorithm is very simple and also you can combine a little bit of programming skills with a little bit of the cybersecurity things that we want to show you in this program. So what we see here is a Python program. Python is a programming language. You don't have to be scared. As a matter of fact, last time I showed you Java program, but this one is a Python. By the way, Python programs are widely used in cybersecurity because they are easy to write. As a matter of fact, there's tons of libraries in Python that can help you to write these scripts something they call Kitty scripts, which allows you to do this connections to networks and extract information. Without going to the details, let me show you what, what we have here in this program. We have a mode basically that is gonna ask you what kind of operation you want to perform, encryption or decryption. And based on that, we're gonna call function called get the message. We're gonna extract the message from the computer user. And based on that, we're gonna make sure if it's encryption, we're gonna translate basically, based on the shifting part, the algorithm that we can see here in the screen. The only thing that we're checking here is in case it's a uppercase letter or if it's a lowercase letter. 
if it's an uppercase letter, the only thing that we have to go is to go to the left or to the right, decreasing this number of ordering in the shifting. Why is it 26 letters here, Professor? Because the alphabet that we're using has 26 letters. So we're going to do the shifting based on the 26 letters. So let's run this program in the terminal. By the way, terminal is a widely used terminology just to mention that you're going to activate the operating system. You're going to access the operating system through a console or a terminal. This is a widely used terminology in the cybersecurity community. Here is asking you to what kind of operation you would like to perform. We're going to use encrypt. It's asking you to enter the message. We're going to use hacker to be consistent with the example that we use. Then it's asking you the number of shifting. The number of shifting is basically the value, the key that we use. In our example, was five. As you can see, the message that is being now encrypted is exactly the one that we used previously. Here we can see that we use the word hacker with the shift in five, and this is the message that got encrypted. Well, that was very nice, and that was very quick. OK, Python, Professor, I don't know Python, but I kind of got the idea. But can we break the Caesar cipher? Unfortunately, yes. It's a very simple encryption algorithm. But we show you that so you can understand the idea behind Caesar ciphers. Now, uh, it's very easy to break. As a matter of fact, look what we just showed it to you. It's very nice because it's very, we only have 26 characters in English, right? And we can make all that shifting without any problem. But in reality, what we can do, we can provide a message to the crypt, have a counter, and then check if the counter is less than 26. If it's true, then we're going to decrypt using that counter as the key. Remember, if you don't know the shifting key, you cannot do anything. I mean, you can try to guess, but we're going to do some kind of brute force. If you remember what brute force is, it's all the possible combinations that we can perform in order to extract that information. And we're going to do this again and again and again until we generate all possible solutions. If it's not less than 26, that means that we exhaust all possibilities and then we exit. Let's try to run that through an example. In similar fashion, we wrote a program that basically uses Caesar cipher, but this time what we're doing here, we're using a counter and a brute force algorithm like a loop. Again, if you forgot what brute force is, go check that episode and it will explain you very nicely how we can use that in order to go through all possibilities. Now what I'm going to run in my terminal is basically the following. Enter the message. We're going to enter the same encrypted message that we generate through hacker. That is the corresponding hacker message. Now, where we're going to run it, it generates all these possibilities using brute force. Notice that most of them, they're gibberish for you because it's using brute force. However, if you pay attention, look what's happened in number five. In number five, we found out hacker. That is the actual word that we encrypt. Now, using brute force help us to identify what is the shift key. In this case, it was five because we use this, all possibilities, 26. It's not all the possibilities, but in reality, there are only 26. So that's why Caesar cipher helps you to understand encryption, but it's not stable. It's not, it's not absolutely secure. So there's more sophisticated tools in order to basically extract or encrypt or decrypt information. Symmetric, they're nice. They're actually easy to understand, but mostly are actually uh, very simple to decrypt or it's very simple to break it. So that's why we need to use something more sophisticated like asymmetric ones. And that is where RSA stands for and actually OpenSSL. We're going to talk about OpenSSL in a different episode so we can actually elaborate a little bit more about what is asymmetric and what is hashing. Remember that this shows what we're trying to give you is this understanding about what is happening behind the scenes in computing, particularly in cybersecurity, and this is what we're talking about. So I want to thank everybody who has been providing this that information uh, for the, what's that? Oh, you like it. Now you like it or you hate it? I don't understand. Oh, you hate it. Okay, if you hate it, send us a message and tell us why you hate it. Wait, what? 
oh, you love it. OK, well, if you love it, send us an email to this link or to this email and like this video, like this channel, of course, share it with your friends. So we have all this library for the Hackers Corners and we are very happy to see all these comments, likes and shares and emails that you've been sending us for the past episodes. Thank you so much for that. My name is Christian Servin and I am the host for the Hackers Corners. I'll see you next time in another excited show. See you next time.